started to cry a little bit. And it's my nature to hide. And I realized something, uh, side note here, I was watching this video last night on YouTube and it was these worshipers and you know, a Caucasian uh, family, they worship crazy. And see, um, I'm sure they think the same thing about us, you know, all that bucking and chucking we just did in here. Um, and and uh, I was watching this video and they're sitting there in Canada and they're worshiping and the young lady, uh, one of my favorite artists in Canada, she's singing and she's just worshiping and playing the keys and worshiping. And these people are up at the front and they're, it's just wide open space. They have their backs to the audience, their faces are facing this young lady as she ministers. And they're just worshiping, standing up. They're crying, crying out to God. Little children crying out. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then I said, I couldn't do that. And the question came, why? Because, this was my answer, when my worship is brought me to tears, I want to show you how well we had. I don't want to show my worship. So why is it that every time I'm crying, I got to hide my face? You ever notice that? And when someone really, really, really starts crying, when the Lord is really on them, it doesn't have to be bad. When the Lord is really right. on them, the right. first thing they do is hide their face. That's right. So that's just a side note. So, you know, this person just continued to tell me about, you know, my life. And I'm like, I don't even know you from that. You know, just, you know, you can tell me that. And obviously, this is nothing that I've told anybody. So I was not comfortable with the exposure. And so this person, you know, began to work on me. Somebody said, work on me. Work, work on me. me. And I just started crying. I wanted to hide my face. And the Lord said, don't you dare hide your face. So tears are just starting to flow. And this person said, you were not wrong. And I'm paraphrasing here. You were not wrong for exposing your intimacy. But the character and the nature of the person that was supposed to cover you left you embarrassed. Because what was holy and pure, not because it wasn't messed up, but pure because the intention was to show you where I was so that I could be healed. The intention, the, the intention of me showing you my scars and my wounds was not so that I could just have more friends. The point was, I want to be back in order with the way God originally set it up in Genesis for us to be exposed and not ashamed. Right. And the word tells me that you created us to not be ashamed. And I'm trying to get out of this mindset of hiding what is supposed to be revealed. Yeah. And so when I endeavor to expose it to somebody, all of a sudden, now you say you can't handle the responsibility of covering what you saw. Because the reality of the matter is not that you didn't like me, but you didn't like my anointing. Yeah. Then the reality is you like my anointing, but you didn't like me. Right. I would rather somebody like me than my anointing. Because when it comes down to it, it's my relationship that I have in my life. Because the ministry is for y'all. But the relationship is for Rachel. And if I am not able to expose myself to somebody, it causes me to be in desolation. And so I was sitting here like, I don't understand what happened? Because I'm not so caught up in somebody that I can't let them go. But I don't understand why it's bothering my emotional psyche so bad that I can't seem to get past it. It's long over, but I'm still stuck with the memory of what was done to me. So the Lord 
began to speak through this individual and said that you've been embarrassed, but you weren't wrong. I know you're waiting on the punchline. That was the punchline. Right, right. I know that you were embarrassed, but you were not wrong. And you were not at fault. And so to the person that said that, I thank you. Because at that moment, I didn't know why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Because in my mind, prophet, I'm thinking that I'm supposed to do stuff according to the word. People say, you do this and God will do this. I don't have an issue with God. My issue is with the integrity of people. Don't you understand that we don't live in an atmosphere with just God? The problem is people. Their integrity and their accountability is shot. And you call yourself investing something because you love them and they invest because they want their return. And because you're healthy, you'll give the return and they'll run because there was no relationship in the first place. They, re they, they relate. But they relate to what you have. And they relate to what you can reproduce because you're still healthy in your womb. And they know if I sow a seed into this person, I can get the benefit of what they birth out. They know that you're healthy. They want the benefit of your accountability. They want you to do this and do that and run and run. And then when it comes time for you to do what God wants you to do, you can't even do it. Because you've been exhausted by things that does not care about your Because I've been exhausted by things. I don't mind being tired for the work of the Lord. I have a problem when my life is ran on the schedule of unsanctified people that don't want to sacrifice to make themselves healthy enough to get what I got. Jesus. I get the attention of God because I got a relationship and you don't deserve to feed from the milk out of my breast. Unless you were there at the inception. Because if you are there to invest because of return and not because of relationship, then you're showing me the essence of your character. And I see that you don't deserve it. God said, I expose you in Genesis because I loved you, not to ashamed. you show to somebody become shameful it's because they're not healthy enough to handle what you show them and therein lies my deliverance because I realized it wasn't nothing wrong with me just who I was connected to so, I'm going to tie it in together. I won't be much longer. So, Tamar is a virgin. And she's the king's daughter. And the king's daughter uh, was given a role because she was a virgin. Let me say a side note here. We don't reward the virgins anymore. Don't say there's a program if you broke, busted, and disgusted with three kids. And ain't trying to do no better. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just saying. I'm still a virgin and I gotta I gotta fight to keep my account in the positive. People come into 
the house of God, I want to give the prophets and evangelists two dollars, and then you see somebody sad and broken, messed up with two black eyes, and you want to give them all your.